أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي لا يبلغ بدحته القائلون ولا يحسي نعماءه العادون ولا يؤدي حقه المجتحدون الذي لا يدركه بعد الحمام ولا يناله غصل فطن ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا والشفيء ذنوبنا سيدنا ومولانا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين لا سيما بقية الله في العرضين صاحب العصر والزمان خليفة الرحمن إمام الإنس والجان ولعن الله وعداءهم أجمعين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بنون إلا من أبى الله بقلب سليم صلى الله عليه وسلم آمين The elements, the ingredients of a successful Islamic family has been our ongoing topic. Tonight is lecture number eight. We have broken down our lectures now for the past week or so into various different subtopics. We've covered everything from a husband to a wife relationship to a parent to a child relationship. And yesterday we began the third and final subtopic, talking a little bit about some of the common problems inside of our homes and their solutions. Yesterday we talked a little bit about the process of mawaddat and rahmat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we have placed between you وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً Between you we placed passion and, and, and mercy. We described to a certain degree what mawaddat means and how we can uh, nurture that between a husband and a wife and between a parent and a child. Today I want to speak a little bit about another aspect that sometimes causes problems inside of our homes and that is the tongue in Islam. Imam Zina Abedin alayhi salatu wa salam We've been continuing in this idea of quoting from his Rasat al Hutub, from his treatise on rights. He also has a discussion where the tongue itself has a right over us. Haqqun lisan, the right of the tongue. And the right of the tongue is very interesting in what he says. He says that the tongue should be inside of you so noble that you should not allow obscene words to reach it. Nor should you allow the tongue to meddle in affairs that are no benefit to you. It's not possible that, nor is it just, that you allow this tongue, the worthy and the pleasure of being the tongue that expresses the dhikr of Allah, Expressing the love of the Ahlul Bayt, expressing the grief of the Ahlul Bayt, and that same tongue also is used to destroy homes. Or that same tongue is used, let's say, to cause problems within other people's homes. Sometimes we don't understand, be it a parent talking to a child, be it a husband talking to a wife, be it someone else talking to somebody else about their family, the sheer effect that our words have on people. Physical wounds, they hurt, they scar, they scab, they heal, they disappear. And usually we don't remember these physical scars because they're not there to, re to remind us. But verbal scars, emotional scars that sometimes are created by the tongue last for a lifetime sometimes. Echo inside of our minds. If our parents said something to us that we didn't like when we were 10 years old, 15 years old, sometimes that stuff lingers inside of us. Sometimes it 
plays with our confidence. Sometimes it causes us to be hopeless. The parents said it and moved on, had no idea of the impact. But the impact was there for sometimes decades after it was said. We have to be very careful with our tongues. Our Holy Prophet Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked two very important questions. He said from the he was asked from the majority of the men who will be entered into heaven, what will be the cause of them entering into heaven? He says, Taqwa and Husni Khalq. Or Husni Khulq, sorry. Piety and good akhlaq, good behavior. But when he was asked what will be the reason why the majority of the men who are in the hellfire will go in the hellfire, he said one word, al -fam. The tongue and the mouth will be the, 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 the primary reason why the majority of us will be dragged into the hellfire. There are a thousand different ways to say the same message. There's one sign that has a cigarette, a line, and a cross in it. There's one sign that says, don't smoke, no smoking. There's one sign that says, don't even think about it. There's one sign that says, thank you for not smoking. There's one sign that says, thank you for thinking of the environment. It's the exact same message of not smoking, four or five different ways of saying it. Sometimes we use the worst possible way to express things to our family members, to our spouse. We don't have control of our tongue. Imam Ali alayhi salatu was salam. Beautiful, beautiful hadith, a very short one, a powerful one. He says, the lisan, the tongue is such, jirmuhu sagiru wa jirmuhu thaqiru. It's jirm, it's mass, it's size, it's small, it's crime is big. Sometimes all it takes is one comment. We make a comment about the fact that, forget within our own family. That's why the hub that Imam Sajjad talked about, one of them is that the, the tongue should not be used to meddle and cause problems in other people's homes. We make comments to the mother-in-law about her daughter-in-law. We make comments to the husband about his wife. We make comments to the parent about the child. And we think we're doing a service to them. But we don't realize we're causing immense problems. You said what you wanted to say and you left. Now what you've done is you've caused a rift where there's no rift to begin with. A very beautiful story from the life of, of, of Imam Sadiq alayhi salatu was salam. I really want us to understand this story very well. A group comes into Medina from Kufa and goes to visit our sixth Imam. And while they were talking to our sixth Imam, they said, and they reported that there was a group of people in Kufa that were talking ill of you and your family. And as your Shia, I want you to know that this was what was said about you and your family. Many times, many times, we do the exact same thing. If somebody has a bad moment, if somebody gets frustrated about their family, about their spouse, about their kids, and you're there and they're complaining about, let's say, their mother-in-law or their father-in-law or their husband or their wife or their kids, and they're not there, you're there and you're listening to this. You for some reason believe that it is your duty now to go back and report what was said by that person to the person she was talking about. Just like these people of Kufa went to Medina and told Imam Sadiq that these people were talking ill about you and your family and your father, etc, etc. Look at the response of Imam Sadiq. Mm. He says that those people who said what they wanted to say, I want you to imagine that they were like people who shot an arrow towards me. And it didn't hit me. Because it didn't reach my ears. I had no idea what they said. What you've done now by coming to me and telling me what they've said, you've picked up that arrow and you've struck me with it. Oh <coughs> and they say that as your Shia, Imam Salik, we're telling you because you should know what's said about you outside. As a friend of yours, you should know what your Baha'u is saying about you outside in these parties. As your friend, you should know what your Sasa is saying about you. And we believe we're 
a good friend. You're not. You're 15, I'm sorry to say. You're causing problems. You're planting the seeds of fitna inside these families. And part of the reason is because you yourself are going through hell, so you want the world to go in hell with you. It's very unfortunate. Because the reality is that a mu'min, his or her tongue lies behind the heart, Imam Ali says. That when they want to say something, they consult the heart, the heart says go ahead and they say it. The foolish or the hypocrite is the one where the tongue resides ahead of the heart. The tongue says something and the heart goes and cleans up the mess of the tongue afterwards. My brothers and my sisters, the fundamental problem we have, not just in our homes, in our communities, amongst each other, is this tongue of ours. So I urge you, I ask you, if you are a parent to a sensitive child, we talked about this a few nights ago, if you are a husband to a wife who you know is sensitive, if you are a mother-in-law or a daughter-in-law, be careful of your tongue, guard your tongue. It is the reason why many of those in the hellfire will be dragged into the hellfire. And that doesn't mean it's just with, when it comes to family. If you are a, the leaders of a community, watch how you address the members of that community. If you are a teacher in a Saturday school, watch how you talk to your students. The tongue is one of those elements and those gifts from Allah that is limitless. The eyes are limited, the ears are limited. The eyes can only see a certain distance. The ears can only hear certain sounds. The tongue is not like that. The tongue has the power to destroy individuals or to elevate individuals. But that tongue that you use for the dhikr of Imam Hussein and the dhikr of Allah and Ya Ali Madat should not be used to destroy families, be it your own or be it somebody else. Sallu ala Muhammad wa I ask you, please guard your tongues. Watch what you say and how you say it. Be careful. Don't meddle in people's businesses. It's none of your business. Worry about your own four walls. Why you need to have little small passing comments as you pass by individuals is beyond me. Because a response to that, if you are somebody who's a victim to constant jabbing of the tongue and comments here and there, you know, there are some people, mashallah, who, you know, it's called a miti khanjar in their tongue. Yeah. They slice and they chop and they leave. And there are some people who are bullied constantly. Individuals who sit around, all they do is make fun of others. You walk through that door and they'll talk about what you're wearing, let's say. The colors you have on, let's say, for example. There are some people, individuals, who know everything about everybody. You want to know about ABC? Ask this person. She'll tell you the history of that individual. There are some people in this community and other communities who know everything about everybody. I feel sorry for you. You're diseased, you're sick, you should have yourself checked. And the problem is that it is a ploy to get attention. These are people who come from broken homes, I'm sorry. These are people who are not happy in their life. These are people who have horrible husbands. These are people who have created their homes to be homes inside the hellfire. And they can't, it kills them to see other people happy. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm leaving tomorrow. <laughs> These things are very important for you to understand. You believe that what you're doing is you're helping. You believe it's a joke. You believe it's a mazak. Everything's not a joke. Be careful what you say to people. They take things to heart. You said you peace and you've left. Now you're sleeping at night. Your one sentence now has kept that person up all night, tossing and turning. Please be very careful. That tongue of yours will be the avenue that Allah chooses to pull you into the hellfire. Protect your tongue, guard your tongue. It's a gift from Allah. This power to speak is a gift. Bayan is a ni'mat of Allah. And we have enough sense to know that every ni'mat has an imtahan inside of it. And so long as you are using that bayan and that speaking ability for the right reasons, Allah will increase the eloquence in your speech. But the moment that you use that tongue and that bayan for anything but Allah, Allah will begin to shower you with disrespect of others through your speech. There are people who are known as people who just chatter and talk and talk and talk. Molana, I sat there, the man spoke for 45 minutes. I don't know what he was talking about. Then there are those who speak for 45 seconds and they move individuals. 
That's why Imam Ali alayhi salatu was salam <laughs> says one of the most beautiful acts of worship is silence. Because when you're not silent, when you're not silent, the first thing that goes, Imam Ali says, is your haya and your shame. When you are shameless, your fear of God is the next, is the next thing that leaves. You say what you want to say, there's no khufi khuda there. Once the fear of God is gone, the heart begins to harden. And once that heart begins to harden, that heart belongs in the hellfire. That's why the ayat I read for you in, in, in the khutbah, a very famous ayat, is the one that says, On the day of judgment, where not your mal and not your banoon, nor your children, will be of any benefit to you. What will be of, of any benefit to us? وَمَنْ أَطَى اللَّهُ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ A secure heart, a heart free of evil, a heart that hasn't been tainted by your own zaban. Because these holes we have in our face, the eyes, the ears, the tongue, these are pathways to the soul. Whatever they say affects the soul directly. Whatever they, they, they hear affects the soul directly. Whatever they see affects the soul directly. The example I'll give you is very simple. You are driving through a construction site and there is smoke and dirt all over in the air. Your car in every single window has a small little hole in it. In the windshield, in your window, in the back windshield. A small hole, a tiny hole. And you drive through that construction area. All the filth of that environment will go and seep into your car. Now your car is dirty. We are no different. These holes of ours go back to our souls. If we allow these holes to walk through construction sites where there's dirt and there's slander and there's ghibat and there's tawmat and there's jute and all these things, our souls will become affected by these things. Nothing else will. The ulama count 35 different sins a man can commit with this one tongue of ours. 35 different sins with the one tongue of ours. And we justify what we say. We try to somehow say it's not ghibat, it's not slander. What I'm saying is true about her. What I'm saying is true about him. If it's true, it's ghibat. If it's a lie, it's slander. That's how it is. So please, I ask you, I ask myself, let's guard our tongue. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala And the hardest time to guard our tongues is when we are angry. That's when we lose control of our tongue. That's why if you want to understand what an insan is in the eyes of Islam. You see, Islam talks about the fact that an animal is born an animal, lives an animal, and dies an animal. A plant is born an animal, a plant lives a plant, dies a plant. An insan is born an insan. But it's very possible that they might die as an animal. Imam Ali says that we actually live between two different stages. One is above the angels and one is beneath the animals. And we fluctuate between these two states sometimes. How do we maintain the idea of having above the line of the animals? He says very, very quickly, I only have five minutes left, very quickly, there are four distinct powers inside of every individual's nafs and soul. One is ghazab, anger. One is shahwa, desire. One is wahab, creativity. One is the aql, reasoning. Every single human being, Muslim or not, have been given these four powers. The, the prophets, the imams, our parents, the ulama, the communities, if you can do a khulasa, a summary of everything that they're trying to do for all of us, they're trying to inject us with, with humanity, what does the human structure look like? It looks like this, where on top of your internal kingdom is the power of aql and reasoning. And below that aql are the other three that exist. Anger, desire, and creativity. Where if you want to become angry, you go up to the aql, you knock on the door and say, excuse me, Mr. Aql, is it okay if I become angry at this? And he'll say yes, and he'll say no. If he says no, you maintain your silence. If he says yes, you express your anger. 
When you're looking at what's happening right now in the Gaza Strip, when ISIS in Iraq is there, when the Shohadar are being killed in Pakistan, this should trigger anger inside of you. But when someone makes you angry and you want to give back to them with your tongue, it's a moment, it's a family member, it's your wife, it's your husband, it's your kids, it's somebody as part of your beloved community. At that moment, the Atta says, remain quiet, maintain your dignity. Is that, is that hard? It's very hard. When you're angry, you want to avenge and revenge. I want them to feel the pain I feel. But if we are the two Shias of Ali, we wouldn't do that. Let's look at the life of Amir al very quickly. In the war of Khandaq, all of you have heard the Fasal, mashallah. When Amr ibn Abdaud was taunting the tent of Rasulullah, saying, is there anybody here to fight me? Imam Ali stood up three times. The Prophet said, sit down. Let's give the others a chance. There's no one else in that tent. <laughs> when they're watching from the door and from the tent that Ali is fighting Amr ibn Abdaud, and there came a time where Ali is on the chest of Amr, and he spit this malun spit in the face of Amir al-Mu'mineen, I don't care how patient you are. I don't care how pious you are. Another man spits in your face, it's on. It's anger. It's personal anger. Imam Ali gets up, takes a round, goes back and finishes Amr. You've heard the story a thousand times. Hear it in this context now. When they asked him, Ali, you gave Amr, a giant of the man, an opportunity to stand up and fight you. Why would you do that? He said, when this man spit in my face, I became angry. Not for Allah, I became personally angry. I stood up, I calmed myself down, I re-cleansed my intention, I realized my anger is not for me, it's for Allah. I went back and I killed the man. Meaning this is what a Shia of Ali does. When you're angry at the wrong person, or when the wrong person makes you angry and you shouldn't react, calm yourself down. Remove yourself away from that situation. Put some water on your face. Put, uh, do do will do anything and everything to calm yourself down. The last thing that a Shia of Ali should do is react right away. That's why it's important for us to have our own set of morals and principles and values. It's crucial, one last point. When we have our own set of morals, we don't become a reflection of the person in front of us. And that's our problem. When the person in front of us is angry, spewing jahalat at us, we become more angry and more jahil than the person in front of us. You want to see jahalat? I'll show you my jahalat. When the person in front of us is loving and respectful, we become meaty meaty. When the person in front of us is calm, we become calm. Anger, we become angry. All we become is a reflection of the person in front of us. That's not what akhlaq is. Akhlaq is you have your own values, you have your own principles. If they're spewing jahalat at you, you fire back with the ilm at them. If they're firing fire at you, you become the water to put out that fire. If that person is showing you an ugly side of them, show the beautiful side of you. It's difficult, it's not easy. This is the sunnah of the Ahlul Bayt. Tomorrow is our second Imam's Jashan. We'll read beautiful stories from the life of Imam Mushtaba where men would come and swear at him, insult his family. His response is what? That you are a Musafir in Medina. Come to my home. You have a place to eat, uh, stay, a place, uh, food to eat, clothes on your back. Come, I'll give you whatever you want. He falls at the feet of Imam Mushtaba. Says, everything I've heard about you is not right. If anyone has the haq to be the walayat and the wali of, the, of Rasul, you and your family have that right. Win them over. If you are a victim of somebody who is constant taunting and constant ridiculing, do not lower your self-respect to their dignity. Please. Give them another avenue. Treat their khanjar with your shield. Treat their akhlaq with your akhlaq. If they refuse, if they refuse to show you your, their good akhlaq, then also refuse to show them your bad akhlaq. This is the sunnah of the Ahlul We have immense problems in our household. A lot of them can be cured by first tying up this thing inside of our mouth, purifying our tongue, saying things in a different way, understanding the sensitivity of my kids and my spouse and my community members, not saying everything that comes in my head. 
Yes, we get angry. Doesn't mean you act on the anger. It means you control yourself. And inshallah, in the process, we're able to mend our differences together. We ask you Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, <coughs> to accept this qaleel and ibadat, inshallah. We ask you Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the middle of the month of Ramadan approaches, accept our amal, inshallah. Forgive our sins, inshallah. Forgive the sins of our marhumin and our parents, inshallah. Ya Allah, there are individuals the Mustaz Afin in the Gaza Strip, in Iraq, in Syria, in Pakistan, and all over the world who are in desperate need of your du'as and our du'as. We ask you Allah to weaken the hands of the enemies of Islam, inshallah, strengthen the hands of the Mustaz Afin, and finally Allah, hasten the reappearance of our Mullah Imam Zamana, and allow us to be his Ansar when he comes, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.